Here are five types of board members you need for your nonprofit, especially you new nonprofits. Let's get into it. Hey there, this is Tiffany with Boston A Budget. So I help people start their nonprofits and raise money for their nonprofits. I have started a membership society to help you get funding for your nonprofit. So if you need a community of nonprofit founders just like you and you need help, make sure you sign up for the society. It's linked below. So in this video, I'm just gonna share five types of board members that will be really helpful when you are launching your nonprofit. This is really specifically for new nonprofits, but I'm sure this advice can be used for those who have been around for a while. Number five is like a twofer. So make sure you watch to the end because I'm giving you two types that go together. So the first one is someone with a legal background or who is a lawyer or who has access to a lawyer or with someone with a legal background. This is why I'm saying this. A lot of what you're doing, especially in the beginning, is around rules, regulations, and policies. It's important that you invest time in the beginning to writing strong bylaws, to writing your policies out, to understand what your policies should be, but also comparing that to state law. What a lot of people miss about starting a nonprofit is that states have just as much as a stake in what you do and regulate what you do. More so, way more so than the IRS. The IRS is interested in certain things, but the state also has requirements that you're probably missing because you're focusing so much on the IRS and the federal government. So someone from a legal background or who practices law in your state knows how to read the law, knows how to interpret the law so that you can protect yourselves and knows how to set up your policies and your bylaws so that it's strong so that if it's ever challenged or you come across a, like a sticky situation, you have something to fall on. The point of having a policy or having rules and regulations is so that there's a standard. So when something happens, you have something to compare it to. You have a reference so you know which way to go you have some kind of guidance but when you're creating that guidance it needs to be it needs to be solid so i always tell people when they're writing their bylaws and their policies of course you can look at examples there are plenty of examples on the internet but the rules for every state is so different and also how you set up your organization and the culture of your organization is different. And so you wanna make sure you still have your own special style on it, but it still falls within the confines of the law. And that's why it's important for a lawyer. And just period, just having someone help with general liability questions and things like that can be helpful as well, especially as you start to serve more people and hire people. And there are different types of lawyers for that. So it's not enough probably just to have a lawyer on your board because they probably only practice one kind of law. So if you're thinking about who to have on your board as a startup, you probably wanna have someone who has some affinity or knowledge of taxes or tax law or businesses, contracts, corporations, that kind of thing. I think would be really helpful, but also have access to legal advice or legal counsel when other things come up. And just keep in mind before I finish this point, you want to have people who have experience with nonprofits. Just be mindful of that. When you're dealing with nonprofits, it can be different. Some of the scenarios can be different, especially with how you set up your nonprofit and your bylaws and with hiring and things like that. So just keep that in mind that you want to find somebody with that nonprofit experience. Or, like I said before, have someone who can have access to that. The second one is having someone who is comfortable with finances. So ideally, this person would be the treasurer or would be in support of the treasurer. So the treasurer is typically one of the board officers who sits on the board. And let me just say this. Everybody who sits on the board needs to be comfortable reading financial information. Everybody who sits on the board needs to understand the financial status and situation of the organization. They need to know how to read reports, all of that. They should be inspecting all of that. That's everybody's responsibility, not just the treasurer. It's just that the treasurer is the point person to help translate certain things or explain certain things and make sure reports are created and make sure that you know deadlines are met and documents or reports are submitted related to the finances of the organization so the treasurer is the point person but everybody needs to know but in reality when people join the board a lot of people are icky about finances or they just don't know they don't know 
what a financial statement is. They may have never seen one before in their life. <laughs> they don't know what a statement of functional expenses is for a nonprofit, which is why you have somebody who's comfortable with that. So if they don't know it in the nonprofit world, they can figure it out or learn it so they can translate it and help everyone else. So you really want somebody who's comfortable and confident about talking about finances because you're going to need a budget and you need somebody who's comfortable with digging into a spreadsheet, doing calculations, helping to figure out how much to pay people, how much you need for fringe benefits, how much you need to raise in the year. That is so vital to you raising money. You just have no idea how important it is to have a grasp on that so you can have enough money to fund your programs. So I really recommend you find somebody comfortable with finances. And if they're not really sure about nonprofit finances, at least they're willing to learn and help everyone else understand that so everyone can get up to speed on the board. I'll just say this person does not have to be a CPA. Now there may be some laws around this in your state, so this is just general advice. But the person who serves as your treasurer does not have to be a CPA. Right? Sometimes I don't even have to be an accountant. And I know some people are going to probably be like, oh my God, Tiffany, I can't believe you said that. I'm just saying from my experience, they just need to be comfortable with money. And if there are certain tasks like bookkeeping or producing a 990 that's above your, you know, your abilities or your capacity, that's when you hire. But you don't necessarily need an accountant on the board. You just need people who are comfortable with talking about finances and reading financial reports. Number three is somebody with good organization skills. So there's a lot of paperwork that comes with having a nonprofit. And some of this you need hard copies of. I would recommend you keep hard copies of certain things. You should have a document retention policy which speaks to how long you keep certain documents because there are certain documents you should never get rid of, right? I'm a proponent for having some hard copies but absolutely virtual or electronic versions of everything that you need for your organization. But there are different types of things you need to organize, right? So you need to organize your state paperwork, you need to organize your federal paperwork and your federal reports, and you need to organize your financial statements, and you need to organize your program data and the tracking for that and curriculums you may create. You need to keep track of marketing information. That's a lot, y'all. I didn't even name everything. So if you as a founder especially are not very organized, you better make sure you have somebody who can help keep track of that. And ideally, the secretary, which is an, another office on the board, can help keep track of things like that and make sure the minutes are done. So let me stop and say this. The meeting minutes are so important because they document the decisions made by your board. And so you have to make sure that meeting minutes are being taken, that they're being signed, that they're being stored somewhere and there's easy access to them. You should never ever destroy your meeting minutes for your nonprofit. And your secretary will typically be the one in charge of that and keeping track of that. So you need somebody who's organized, who has a structured kind of mind, who can keep on top of those kind of things. And that's their role, right? That's their role to just pay attention to that kind of stuff. But there's so much paperwork you got to keep track of that having someone with good organization skills is definitely an asset for your board. So the fourth thing is somebody with good writing skills. So this can play out in a bunch of different ways, but one of the most powerful ways is with grant writing. So grant writing isn't just about your skill in writing. It is around your skill of being persuasive with that writing, making your point, being compelling, telling good stories. And also there's the non-writing aspect of grant writing. That's relationship building, working on your credibility and your community, all of that. But it's just really good to have someone who can write in a compelling way, who has an organized way of thinking so they can translate that into writing, who can help translate possibly what you're trying to say if you're not good with writing into words so you can communicate that in content like your social media posts or in articles or in blog posts or things like that. So it's a really good skill to have. But let me even take it further beyond writing. I think just someone who's good at messaging someone who's good at communicating, who can help you verbally communicate or um, in a written way communicate about the point of your nonprofit, about what your core message is, someone who can help tell good stories. Because when you have a nonprofit, you need a newsletter. You need to keep people abreast of what's happening with your organization. So someone who can do that and pull that together and tell a good story is so important. So think about someone, not just 
writing, but someone who can help you communicate the true purpose of your nonprofit and do that in a compelling way. And then finally, this is the twofer I talked about. So traditionally with a board, you need people who are good strategic thinkers. You need people who can look long term and can plan for that, right? Who can look at a, a vision and see how you can get there. That is traditionally for a board really important because their role traditionally in an established organization is to more so advise or make rules or make the hard decisions. So you need those big thinkers. But what's different for a new organization is you also need people who can execute. And what happens is if you have a, an imbalance, so you have too many people who are there just to be strategic thinkers and aren't executors, then you have this imbalance where you as a founder are doing everything. Or it could be that they're not necessarily strategic thinkers, but they don't realize that they have to execute, that they have to work alongside you. So I think it's important for you to have strategic thinkers and executors too. And it helps to have people who have both of those skills, but that may not always be the case. So you need that balance. You need some people who can think beyond and help you strategize, but you also need people who can get their hand, like roll their sleeves up, get their hands dirty. And I'm not implying that nonprofit work is dirty. I'm not saying that at all. It's just the same, right? I just mean that people who are not afraid to actually interface directly with your clients, do the work, do the back end paperwork, get in there and get it done. Because the reality is as a founder, you cannot do it all yourself and you're not supposed to do it all by yourself because the risk isn't all on your shoulders. When something happens to the nonprofit, it happens to everybody on the board, not just the founder. They need to embrace that and understand their role. So I know you're listening to this and you, you're like, I never imagined that I would have to think about all this with a nonprofit. So that's why I created my membership society to help you learn about how to raise money alongside other founders just like you. Not people who have done this for 20, 30 years, but people who are in the moment with you and can help you. So I will be providing guidance and coaching, but you also can get support from people who are experiencing the same things as you in real time. So if you want to sign up for that society, you can click the link in the description box below. Thank you so much for watching this video. If you need help with your nonprofit, you can also visit me at bossonabudget.com. Otherwise, I will see you in the next video.